Mmm. Do you love kombucha? This is homemade kombucha. I make this here on the Daddy Curbs farm. And recently, a friend of mine started making some and he had some questions. Come along with me while I answer his questions and maybe I will answer some of yours as well. Hey, Mr. Robert. Hey, how are you? All right. How was market this morning? It was morning? great. It was great. Good to see yeah. you. Yeah. Busy morning? Crazy busy. Did yeah, you sell lots? Sold out of everything we had. Nice. Even our new um, quackaroons. Oh, you made them? We made them. They are, they're selling like hotcakes. Nice, yeah, like mini little sweet hotcakes. They're <laughs> mini little sweet hotcakes. They look like little baby hamburgers. Very nice. <laughs> we'll show them to you a little bit later. Good. I'm glad that worked out well for yeah. you. I brought a little bit of my own kombucha. Fantastic. I hear you have some kombucha questions. I do. We have been working on it for the last, let's see, about five weeks, I guess it's been, since we started our first batch. Took your instructions and mixed our black tea and added the sugar and did all of that. Um, it actually looked like it was just doing a whole lot of nothing until about three weeks ago. And that kind of scum started forming on top that you told me to look out for. Right. And uh, I have... 12 jars back in the commercial kitchen back in the back which we're going to go and take a look at in a few minutes but it was interesting because when i went out yesterday six of the jars on one side and i put all this on a heat mat one of those heat mats Very from good. the garden we talked good. about yes and it's just kept the temperature at about 75 degrees Perfect. from the bottom up so it's not hot but it's just keeping it a little bit warm um, and i think that sped things up a little bit but yes. one of the jars the scoby that was formed is completely gone that's interesting. And it's a bit of a mystery. So all right. I'm not sure if it's all the way to the bottom, if it's somewhere in between, or if it somehow, based on the fermentation process, it's all dissolved. I don't know. But I need to know what the next step is from here so that we can figure out where we go. So I'm anxious to get some in my body. Good. Well, let's go yeah. take a look. Excellent. Okay, so come on in. This is our kitchen. We uh, took about three months to get things ready from build out to set up. We needed to do it because we needed to have a commercial kitchen space for our food manufacturer's license. We had our inspection about a month and a half ago and we flew right through it with aces. So we're excited about that. It's got everything we need, lots of good shelving, uh, lots of space and You'll look down below, really good place to store all the kombucha. Oh, yes. And that heat mat is down there? Yeah, that's the blue mat. Oh, nice. Okay. And the kombucha furthest on the end is the earliest or the first batch. And let's just take a look and see. That's where we are. Oh, that's looking beautiful. That looking nice? Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, and there's no problems at all with that. Um, like I said, you know, be careful with the, you might want to double or triple up on the cheesecloth okay. just to help prevent mold from, you know, mold spores. Okay. But uh, right now it looks gorgeous. Okay. Have so you tasted was, it? I have not. Okay, well let's I taste it. Okay. Let me just show you real quickly so okay. we can figure out what is going on. This is the, the one that we were concerned with that I saw a SCOBY forming just like the other five. And it just And it's just kind of, is it in there? Is it down at the bottom? Is it gone? It's in there. It you is. See, it's on the bottom, right there. Okay. It just sunk. Okay. Oh, there it is, yep. yep. Turn it's it so she can see with the camera. Can you yep. see it down in there? It wants to turn with the jar. Okay. There it is. Uh-huh. Okay, so in happens. one case, uh, most of the time the scobies float. This is normal right here. This is what you'll see most of the time. Okay. Occasionally they sink. Okay. And what I've, what I most associated with is maybe a temperature change. Okay. Uh, perhaps this one got cold, but they're all on the heat mat. That doesn't necessarily make sense. But I know in my house when the temperature, when it gets cold outside and our, we don't have the heat on yet, and the temperature drops down to 65 or whatever, okay. the scobies might sink because of that. 
All right. So it's hard telling, but that doesn't mean it's bad. All right. It just sink. It's not that big. And of it's deal. not flat. It's actually at an angle. It looks like so. Yeah. And everything I read said that it could could sink, and part of it will be down, and part of it will be up, and that's perfectly normal. Yeah. And it it's possible for it to go back up. Okay. But most likely, this will stay on the bottom, and you'll form a new one on top. Okay. All right. So when is it? I guess a couple of my questions and having you come over is when is it ready to drink? Is that is the SCOBY forming the sign that it's drinkable, number one? And am I creating this first batch as my mother? Or am I going to take out that SCOBY, store it, start more using that SCOBY, and then carbonate this or do whatever and drink it as it is? Or do I need to save a jar of this to be my starter for my next batch? You could do it several ways. Okay. Um, so if you wanted to drink, if you wanted to make all of this into something you can drink, okay. first of all, we need to check to make sure it hasn't gone past that point. Okay. Uh, what I call the sweet spot. Okay. There's the sugary side where right. you, it has the sugar in it because you made the sweet black tea. Right. And then uh, it goes up to that point to where uh, it starts to get acidic. Right. And then it just goes beyond. Like all the sugar's gone and just turns into vinegar. Some people like it up in that range, most people don't. Okay. So somewhere up in that middle where it's just not sweet, but not super vinegary, that's the middle point, that's the sweet spot. So do you tell that just by tasting or is it a smell? Because it smells like vinegar to me or it has a vinegary smell to it. Right, so it's gonna start having a vinegary smell even before it tastes real vinegary. Okay. Uh, so you can't necessarily, you might get good at telling, okay, now that smell, okay. it's right where I like right it. Where it but um, I taste it. I generally know in my batch, because I use gallon jars, mine are okay. twice the size, and uh, I generally know that with the SCOBY, a good healthy SCOBY, mine will take seven to ten days. Okay. Just because I've done it enough, I know about how long it'll take. Once I get into that five, six, seven day range, I'll start tasting it. I can tell by taste if, you know, do I have two days left or wow, it's taken a long time, I got another week to go or whatever. I just know because I've tasted enough of it. So do you think because I've exposed it to heat and it's been as long as it has that it's even going to be any good? It may be past that stage for drinking, okay. but it would be a good starter. Okay. But and, so even if it's past and it's all vinegar. Mm -hmm. It can still be used as a starter. It's yes. not. It's never going to be too old to be a starter. No. Okay, that's the most important thing. Yeah, uh, your scobies will live just fine in the vinegar. Okay. So it, let's say you had one batch that that's just way too sour. I'm not going to drink that. Okay. Uh, but you also have plenty of others. You can use the others for starter, and then you can store your scobies if you didn't want to have six or eight jars going. Mm -hmm. You can store your scobies all in one jar. Do you separate them with? Parchment paper, nope. or just put just them all let together. Just float in there together. Okay. And and maybe you get to the point to where you're selling scobies at the market. People buy scobies for about ten bucks. Okay. So and you're and once you get good at this, you're gonna have a lot of scobies. Okay. So if you have I mean, one jar, yeah, I pay twenty dollars for one online. Yeah. So you know maybe you can sell. But it was all it was all dried up like it was dehydrated. Mm -hmm. Is that what they're doing to it? Because yeah. you haven't got a dehydrator back there. I could start a whole new division at Rising Kale Farms. You could actually. Now I don't know enough about dehydrating scobies okay. for sale, so I can't answer that question. But I know that's how they sell them online. Okay. So, but you can also sell them local, fresh. It may be a uh, um, maybe a better market to sell that okay. not dehydrated because I think it's probably a healthier thing. I don't know enough okay. to say that yeah. it is, but then let me just pull out one more jar. This is okay. the newest batch. This was started two weeks ago. Okay. All right, so that has a, a much younger SCOBY. There's a little bit forming in there, but that is still, it looks like you're doing, you're doing well. Now that is not even, uh, we can't, we're not gonna taste that no. one because there's no SCOBY or anything on there. It's definitely more vinegary there. Yeah. You can smell it, it's sour, more sour. Okay, so we'll leave this to continue to ferment. Right. So if you want to uh, dip some of that what out. Do I want to, or is it okay to put metal in it? What would it be recommended for? Um, it's probably say, okay. better a plastic ladle if you had some. Now if you're just going to dip real quick, a little metal won't hurt. You don't want to stir it or let metal sit in it. 
I don't, I'm in here with the tester. That's all right. Okay. <laughs> So let's see. Are you let's scared, Robert? I just want to see the reaction on his face. <laughs> there we know. So I, I would just dip it down, you know, okay. push that scoby under, and get some of that out on the spoon. There you go. One more. Looks like tea. Looks okay. Now this is that. just raw, right? There's no fruit juice or There's anything. nothing in okay. it. Okay. It smells like kombucha. That's definitely too far vinegary to make a drink. Okay. Unless you're just into that. Some people are. Okay. I would prefer it not. Now, what some people will do with that super vinegary stuff mm -hmm. is they'll put just a small amount okay. in fruit juice. Okay. So it'll just add a little bit of tang to the fruit juice. Okay. Um, I would prefer more more that than fruit juice. Yes. So that's where the nutrition comes from or the good stuff. Right. right. So this is this is my typical second ferment. This one happens to have a piece of pineapple in it. Okay. But um, in a jar like this, which is 16 ounces, okay. I will put a quarter cup of fruit, fruit juice, juice okay. or sometimes a piece of fruit. Right. But typically a quarter cup of fruit juice, fill the rest up with kombucha, okay. uh, something that's not quite as vinegary. But this is a really nice batch for okay. a starter All right. or what they call a SCOBY hotel. Okay. So you could take your SCOBYs and store them if you started to have too many or you wanted to sell them at market or whatever. Um, you, you might want to taste it yeah, just I'd to like say to what, what, uh, like, what the deal is. <laughs> I can imagine cooking with that. Yeah, absolutely. It's it, it is a vinegar. So if you wanted to use it Ooh, wow. as a hair product, as a cooking product, as product. yeah, being a hairstylist. Dude, that's really good. If this could be a really cool vinegar rinse at the shampoo bowl. Yes. And then I could sell the client a bottle of kombucha. <laughs> yes, right. From the good batch. <laughs> yeah. Here's one that's good for hair, here's one that's good for drinking. Wow. That's interesting. It's not at all like it. I know it's, it smells and reminds me of vinegar, but I don't think vinegar when I taste it. No. I think but it is acidic. Hennick. Mm. It's good. It is good. So you may be one that actually likes that higher vinegary. What if I put fresh ginger in that? Yes, that's something you And could. just flavored it and left the ginger in to see how much the ginger would change the flavor of the vinegar. You could try that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've done that and uh, my personal preference is that the ginger doesn't incorporate as well okay. as now what I have done is where like you can buy apple vinegar juice mm -hmm. or not apple vinegar apple ginger juice okay. and then flavor your kombucha with that to me that's really good okay but when I have just cut up ginger and dropped in to me it doesn't seem to incorporate well so but okay. you know that's again a it reference. reminds me there's almost a, a reminiscent flavor of balsamic yes yeah it's very Mm, I like it, but you I could mix I that with some yeah. oil and spices, maybe. Yeah, make a dressing. There you go. No one's selling salad dressings at the market. There you go. Kombucha, vinegar, salad, salad dressing. dressing. <laughs> and okay. That's why. That's why he's doing well at the market. Yeah. Don't think, 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 think. Okay. So the other thing is, I have a large crock that I started three days before this second batch. Okay. Down here. And I'm not sure, I haven't even taken it off to see what. And this is set to 75 degrees? I believe that's the, the temperature that it's set to. Okay. And there's yeah. something forming. Yeah, you definitely have a scoby forming. Does this have a spout, a spigot? No. No, okay. Okay. So I'll wait for it to form, and as really as soon as it forms is the sign that it's ready to drink. Well, ready? Yes? No? It's not necessarily, I have a SCOBY so it's ready. It's, okay. you need the SCOBY in order for it to really process the tea. So your first batch may be sacrificial. Okay. Because you're building a SCOBY. And that's, I'm okay with that because, as you said earlier, as long as I have those going, I can use that as my starter. I'm happy to have three gallons of starter that I can give to people, whatever. Yeah. Um, as long as I know when it's supposed to stop and when I'm supposed to be able to use it. 
So let's hypothetically say, because this would be my next question, is I am at the perfect stage of drinkability of that bottle. Okay. I take out the SCOBY, I can either store them with others or store however I store it, dehydrate it, whatever. Now I have this base, this much liquid. Mm -hmm. I want to flavor it. Do I, as you did, take a, a quarter part fruit juice and top it with this? Or do I, I guess I answer my own question there, how do I make it carbonated? Okay, so the carbonation is going to come from this, uh, a fermentation that's capped. Which I have. I bought 32 ounce brown, um, they're called Boston something bottles with a okay. screw cap. Okay. And they're 32 ounces, they're ready to go. Okay. If that was in the, in the right stage, I could drain it off, strain it off, put it in the bottle with fruit juice or whatever I wanted to flavor it with and stick it in the refrigerator. Yeah, would, well this is so... Um, on the video that I, I currently have on YouTube, the way I explain it and the way that I do it at my house is that when I put it in this bottle with a quarter cup of the fruit juice and the okay. rest kombucha, I cap it, okay. I put it in the pantry, okay. not in the refrigerator, for three to four days. Okay. Because uh, if you put it in the refrigerator, it'll work, it'll just work slower because it's okay. still fermenting, so it needs to okay. still be warm. Got it. So it, it will force carbonation into the beverage because okay. As the bacteria and yeast breathes, mm -hmm. that carbonation has nowhere to go because it's capped, so it goes back into the, the juice. Okay. Now, then I put it in the fridge for a few days to let it finish and to get it cold because gotcha. it tastes better when it's cold. Okay. Then when you crack it, it's going to, you know, just okay. like a soda. Now, the advantage to using a solid glass jar and a plastic lid uh -huh. is that if it pops, your lid's going to break, not your jar. Because it's a solid it, glass or a solid a, glass a jar. Good sturdy, sturdy, sturdy? Uh -huh. A good sturdy glass jar and a sacrificial plastic. Let plate. me grab one and I'll show you what I'm using. Okay. okay. So this is the bottle you purchased yes. for your second fermentation. Uh, these are really good. Um, the fact that it has a plastic, it says a nice heavy glass jar and a plastic lid, that's good because if, if it creates too much pressure, the little this is going to pop glass. and you're not going to break this. Gotcha. Now one disadvantage of this jar versus something like this, if you form a SCOBY in here, too bad. Wow. it's going to be hard to get out. Okay. It's not necessarily that big a deal, but chances are it will fold and come out, but there's also a chance it might not. Okay. So it's just a little disadvantage with a small opening, but I love the jar. Those mm -hmm. are really nice. You got good taste in jars. Yeah, you do. You got okay. good jars. So, I think... <clears throat> I just want to find out what stage that was in, what it should taste like. Mm -hmm. So, I'm probably on this batch down here, as soon as I see a SCOBY form, not, maybe not quite that thick, mm -hmm. I'm going to take it and taste it. And now that I've tasted that, I'll know the difference. Right. That's a flavor you was not afraid. That was the same age as these. Oh, that's the same. Oh, that's the one that sunk. That's the one that sank. And those are these are um, three weeks old. Okay, so and they don't have a fully formed scoby, no. so they're probably not ready. I mean, they they may be as far as flavor, but I don't, I wouldn't disturb them if they don't have a full scoby. Okay, gotcha. Because it, the fact that they're forming scobies now. When you redo this, mm -hmm. you're going to be putting a SCOBY back in that's already formed. Right. So the next batch is going to, you'll be able to get to that point faster. faster. So we'll have a that's, then that will be my next question. So here we are. I've taken out all the jars. I've put them on top. I've removed all the SCOBYs. I've done what I need to do with the liquid. So I now have, let's just hypothetically say between those six and these six, I have 12 SCOBYs. Mm -hmm. I get gallon jars the next time. <laughs> and they're installing a new pipe. Um, and then I take that SCOBY and I put it in the jar. Do I put it in the jar first? Do I do the tea? Okay. But, oh, I, I take, I know, I know the answer, but go ahead, I think. Because now I'm confused on when I do what. Okay, that's okay. Because, I mean, it's a few steps. So, if all these were at the right stage, this is what I would do. I would have a big bowl, uh -huh. like one of your, uh, preferably plastic. not a metal bowls, get okay. a plastic bowl or, or a crock. Okay. Uh, Non-reactive, exactly. I would put a little bit of that juice in the bottom of the bowl. Okay. I would take all your scobies and put in the bowl and cover it up with a towel. Okay. 
Do what you need to do with the Why, liquid. Liquids. Pour it into smaller jars. Okay. Whatever. Make your hairdressing, whatever you want to do. Fancy shampoo tonic. Right. Anything you want to do with that liquid. Okay. Then you make your fresh black, black tea. sweet tea. Black sweet tea. One gallon, uh, one gallon of tea for one cup of sugar. Right. And that's going to be the ratio you need for the tea. Um, make sure it's room temperature. And then add the SCOBY. And then put your SCOBY plus a cup or so of the, of the liquid. Original liquid. So so keep one jar aside okay, for why? starter. Tell me why the, because they're starter. That was why the SCOBYs didn't work then. Maybe. Oh, you, you put a dehydrated SCOBY in with no starter liquid. Dehydrated SCOBY with no starter liquid. No wonder. So the SCOBY may have been fine, but I think sometimes those are rehydrated with vinegar to reactivate. Yeah, and it never in the instructions never said anything about adding a mother. Okay. Or any starter liquid. I call the mother starter. Okay. The starter liquid is where you're getting that jump start. So the starter is the mother. Yes. yes. Well, so, m mother is a, is a confusing term because some people call the solid part the mother. Oh, and see, I call the SCOBY the SCOBY and the mother the starter. It, it, it's been, it's okay. both ways. Yes. All right. The, the truth is both are basically starting the next starting batch. Starting the next batch. That's probably why it didn't tell me to, or anything about the, um, adding the, the other starter. I just put in the SCOBY and that's why it didn't do anything. It's it very sank possible. right to the bottom and it never floated. That's very possible. I still have one and I've never used it. It's it probably just didn't have what it needed to, to get started. To go again. Yeah. Okay. So that liquid's important. Okay. Put at least half a cup. Half a cup. So when I do mine, I do it in gallon jars. Okay. Um, I put a whole cup of liquid okay. plus this one gallon plus in one, the next. one cup. Right. So the sweet black tea. So I usually use about two thirds to three quarters full of sweet black tea. Okay. One cup of liquid and a SCOBY. Okay. That starts my next batch. Okay. And what is your average turnaround time? Seven days? Ten days? Yes. Okay. Because at, at one point I was getting, I mean, I know those were forming and that was a real high for me to know that it was actually working and the chemistry was there. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking, oh my God, if I was going to make this as a regular drink, I would have to fill this whole room with gallon jars. Yeah. But I don't need to now because it doesn't necessarily have to be like, I don't need to take this entire amount of liquid. If this was good, that entire amount of liquid, I would add it to fruit juice or whatever else. So I'm diluting it somewhat. Yes. And it's not going to take 30 days to make each no. batch, which is what I've been led to believe. No. no. Okay. Well, if the temperature's right, your uh, bacteria and yeast is healthy and happy. Uh, the you should get it in certainly under two weeks. Okay. All right. So I'm turning mine around roughly 10 days, maybe okay. a little less. I would like to be able to reach into my refrigerator every morning and take one of these to work. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's my, my goal. Okay. Um, so I guess we're going to be making some more SCOBY and some more kombucha. What you have here. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, so six gallons. Yeah. You should be able to supply yourself one of those a day easy if you're in, in a constant rotation. Yeah, this will, four of these will make a gallon. So, right, 32 ounces, there are 64 ounces in a half gallon. 64 ounces in a gallon. Oh my gosh. Is no, 128 in a gallon. So that's right. So four of these would make a gallon. Will you drink a whole one a day? Oh gosh, I would drink easily a whole one. I'd probably drink more of them. Do you already drink kombucha? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Because this is that's another for anyone that's watching the video. It's a it's a valuable question to answer. Uh, people, you know, if you're already drinking kombucha, you could drink a quart without trouble. I could easily drink a quart without trouble. But somebody who's not used to kombucha, if they drink that, oh. they may get a little sick in the yeah. tummy. So I normally tell people if you've never drank kombucha, start with two ounces. Okay. Two ounces today, tomorrow, maybe for three, four, maybe in a whole week for two ounces. Okay. And then do four ounces and then six ounces and step up to the point to where you're drinking a whole pint. Okay. And if you can drink a pint in a day with zero issues, chances are you could drink a quarter in a day and it's more, the same. It's also a good sign you probably need more help. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> or your, your gut needs more help. Yeah. Okay, so as an example, yours is your kombucha that you started, some fruit mm -hmm. juice, and the pineapple wedge. How well, much? this one was just pineapple and ginger. Okay. Uh, no fruit juice. 
Okay, okay, okay. And did you use fresh ginger or was it? Yes, um, fresh ginger. Okay. Um, in my opinion, the ginger, when it's cut fresh, like I said yes, earlier, it doesn't do a whole lot. Okay. But I put it in there anyway because I know it's doing some good. While she's rolling the camera, I'll show you something. And tell me what you think I should do. Okay. This wasn't bought for this purpose. Okay. Grated ginger. It's probably got citric acid in it. For this? And no, I didn't buy it for that, but I have it. Oh, okay. Because it's got vinegar in it already, right? Uh, it's ginger, cane sugar, water, rice vinegar, and citric acid, salt and citric acid, right? So, I mean, I, I don't know that I would put that in kombucha. I'm just curious, because I, I was looking around the kitchen the other day at all the things that I had. Mm -hmm. That's for one of our other projects, but I was just curious if it would, uh, what it would do. Experiment. I don't, I don't, yeah, you could experiment. I separate mean, a small batch. Really well, just do a 16 ounce. Maybe to rinse it off. Maybe. Take it out, rinse it off, try maybe. it, and see what happens. Yeah. The ginger, sugar, vinegar, and acid wouldn't bother me. It's the salt. It's the salt. And the that right might have a problem. Okay. But, you know, if you have a 16 ounce jar, put a little bit in there, fill it up, put it, you know, let it sit for a few days, put it in the fridge, and see how it tastes. See if it, you know, you'll know when you crack it open and drink it yeah. if it's bad. Yeah. And then, I mean, it's bad, bad kombucha just tastes bad, smells bad. So then my only other question in having you here today is now that we've discovered where we are, what we've done, how it's turned up, and what's going on, is there any way to reverse kombucha once it's turned to this point that it's turned? Start a new batch. Okay. No. Okay. You, you're not going to save this as a beverage unless, of course, you're okay with that acidic flavor and maybe you just flavor a fruit juice or put it in tea, like you just make some tea and you put a little kombucha in it just for the beverage, but not to ferment longer, but just to flavor your tea. That's what I'm saying. You could, okay. could use that. But as far as turning it backward, no. I mean, it's, it's past that point. Have you, in any of your blogs or your vlogs or whatever you're doing, have you done anything on the health benefits, like the detailed benefits of how something like kombucha and fermented foods actually changes and can change your body's perspective on what it's doing. I haven't done any detailed videos of that. It's something I want to do. Okay. Uh, I believe in it wholeheartedly, uh, but there's something about sharing on video. Uh, people are pretty easy to pick up on if you say it wrong, yeah. you know, you know that doesn't follow the, the scientific right. whatever. Uh, so I'm, I'm hesitant to, to just say it without doing more research, but I do certainly believe in fermented foods being good for our gut. Okay. So we're ready to wrap up the video, the, the question and answer. It was really fun hanging out with you in this kitchen space and, and talking about this because I love this kind of stuff. I know you do too. My advice, uh, if I were to give any besides what I've already shared with you uh, on camera, I think before I told you double or triple double up. Or triple. Uh, the thickness. extra layer so there's a little less porous okay. because we don't want any dust or mold spores or whatever to get in there. Okay. Uh, so I actually use a, a uh, like a terry cloth. Okay. So it's more uh, dense. Okay. Also, it feels a little warm. Okay. In here, the the mat feels a little warm, so you may be processing a little faster than you want okay. to. Okay. So if this has a dial, you could just turn. It, it doesn't. Down. But what okay. if I did one day on, one day off? There, if you if you had. Or set it on a timer. I could do that too. Yeah, where it where was underneath. Yeah. Uh, or so, it was on for a couple hours each day. Right. Or maybe even put a wire wire rack under the jars so it's not directly contacting okay. it. So the little okay. airflow. Any just a way to regulate the temperature back down okay. closer to the mid seventies because this just feels a little warm okay. and it's a little warm in here. Yeah. So now the bacteria and yeast are gonna be active, but they may be too active. Okay. So that's really, your setup is great. That's just the, my only two pieces of good advice. That's what I needed. Very good. Okay. All right, camera lady, what else? That's a wrap. That's a wrap? Okay. Well, you're doing great, and I think you're going to have a lot of really fun Oh. Opportunities to either share that at the uh, uh, the salon or, <laughs> or at the market or wherever, but it's a fun product. It's good to share. It's fun to drink. Um, yeah, so you're doing great. Yeah, yeah. Robert, thanks for letting me hang out with you. You are very welcome. Thanks for coming over. I'm got I got my kombucha questions answered. And if you have more, give me a call. I will. I will. In the next batch that works, 
I'll rush it on over. Great. Yeah. I can't wait to taste Good. it. If you have kombucha questions and you'd like to put them in the comments below, Robert would be happy to answer them. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I would be happy to help you out as well. Uh, also, if you like this kind of video where we're doing question answers with other, uh, at other people's farms, uh, other locations more than my farm, you can leave that in the comments below as well. Subscribe, thumbs up, that always helps. I'll talk to you soon.